Well, the abandoned Hummer project still exists. It's, it's still here. If you guys haven't seen anything on the Hummer build, I've done a whole thing. I'll list the videos below. You guys can go back and check them out if you want, and then come back to this video or watch this one through, then go check those out. It's pretty interesting how we've gotten to this point with a suburban chassis, an LS engine, and a Hummer body. It kind of got put on the back burners for a little bit, stuff with all the COVID and the vents that got shut down. Wasn't quite sure where to go with the thing. Yeah, so we've kind of been weighing it back and forth. Now it's kind of like a normal project. You, you get into it where you're thinking you're going one direction and you start kind of liking the project, seeing a different direction for it. Don't me wrong, I still like the burnouts, but I'm kind of liking this thing as more of a drive of old and go enjoy it some more and stuff. So I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of bulk. And that's kind of what we've come up with is this thing is coming together. It's gonna to be super cool, but it's also, you don't wanna paint this thing into a corner where you can only do one thing with it because you're thinking like a big blower engine or yeah that was first thing i was going to put a ls with the big uh, uh hat on it and like a 1071 on it beyond methanol and methanol it would very it would have been very limited those type of vents which granted i could change it but i'm getting older i'm getting lazier i don't want to be doing all that stuff and changing it so now i'm still sticking with the ls obviously that's the way to go these days turbo 400 possibly some twin turbos uh, make it more of a drive -o, but it's still going to make lots of power. It should have roast the tires at any given moment you decide to flip the switch and get with it. Slam it down. I've been looking at probably some 24 inch rims. I've done some other stuff. I started by making my shock mounts here and stuff so I could lower it. The steering was quite a project for you. That was kind of one of the things you were up against and trying to... Yeah, the steering, because where it comes through the from the dash in there, it's already got a uh, swivel right on the bottom, so you really only got about two foot, and it turns and goes out to the thing, on to your, out the side of your footwell here. So I didn't want to butcher it out the front and come out and punch another hole, get into my brakes, so I left it the same, coming out the side, so I had to put another joint. So really I got three U-joints in here. I had to put another support off the chassis here, so I got one up on the steering column. It comes right off of there. And actually on the Hummers, they're made to, uh, they slide. So it gives and take them. It's probably because of the four wheel drive and the- Has some adjustment there and everything. Yeah, who knows? I don't know that side of the- Maybe the body's flexed quite a bit and stuff. Yeah, I'd imagine there's probably quite a bit of flex on the, the, the stock Hummer frames are <laughs> crazy solid, but the way it comes up, the body mount on the Hummer too is real thick, real big. So it probably has something to do with that. Worked on a bumper. I got the bumper. Yeah, I don't think you guys saw the bumper at all before. He, we showed you guys in the other video the back one, but then he ended up building this front one here. Yeah, I'm trying to keep this up. I, I'll probably do the brush guard. I haven't quite came up with the, I do like the look of it just because it makes them look meaty. But once I get this thing done and sitting on the ground, it kind of gives it a different style so i'm trying not to make it look so off-road but yet granted that's what these things are really yeah if you guys see this is like full droop right here so this is the suspension all the way down so it's actually going to be pretty low when this thing is sitting on the ground plus you're thinking some bigger wheels and tires and also move it out to the body and all that stuff yeah. but yeah i'm gonna get some other rims so i'm offset them out here about another three inches wider on the tire good i did the brakes yeah, it's pretty cool. It kind of went back and forth on whether or not to put like a normal master cylinder, like manual one that are on race cars and stuff. But this is the factory one from the Suburban. Yes. Yeah, I kept everything the same since I kept the brakes off the Suburban. I figured, well, I might as well just keep the master cylinder. No, it's not power, but that's all right. What's a little bit of leg power? <laughs> yeah. And stuff. So I built a little the adapter plate so it hooks to the, so that the goes firewall. Right up against here, which is where the factory one on the Hummer was. So it just adapts it over. Yep, to that, it. that's what all this here was. So I built the adapter to go in here. This is set. It just barely clears the the firewall up here on the top. I have to re-plumb all the brakes, obviously, and everything. Made my little bracket. Coming off the inside, so this is part of my adapting plate. Goes off the side, so it'll hold it. This right here, put the restrictor, because the pedal and the Hummer will come back. It's like most race cars. They have free travel, and if you don't have a little limiting bracket on them, uh, if somebody was reaching in with your foot or you pull up the brake pedal, this thing will pull out of your master cylinder on the back, drops out, 
and you have no brakes. So this is just a little safety thing. So when it's in there, this actually stops the brake pedal. It comes up. It still has adjustable thing here. Just like, like everything, yeah. the pedal height. And so you've just been working on a bunch of like little pieces and parts. I mean, that was quite a little project just to adapt all that over for you. Yes. Yeah, you started with one thing, thinking there's a stop in there. Well, then you get to looking at it and realize, nope, there's no stop. i got to create my own. It's actually pretty easy. They're pretty basic so far from what I found on the Hummer. Not that I'm adapting a lot to it, but... The pedals are pretty primitive. It's like working on a track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're pretty pretty simple. And then the Suburbans really aren't all that complicated either. And that's what's nice is you can use some of that stuff like he's talking about still using, like, you know, the power steering and all that stuff. You thinking you're going to go ahead and just put it, keep the pump and everything right on the 5.3? Yep, I'm going to keep the, the power steering, the whole, the whole deal. I'll, I'll make myself some new uh, lines come up here. Uh, won't need no air conditioning, so don't have to have that. The way it works right now, I can put me a radiator that fits right about in here, come up through here and stuff. So all that, I, I've got plenty of room. That's why I was thinking with the blower. I ended up moving the, I think we went over that in the last video, but it ended up being 12 inches back that I moved. This is basically the center of the motor mount before. Yeah, the, the engine sat way further forward in the Hummer than it does right now. Yeah, so some of this has changed as far as what's, front end for the vehicle and well you're just trying to adapt what worked on the suburban for the most part and what has to be to fit the hummer body right yeah you're, you're limited by certain things to make certain things fit and work so the other thing i've been working on was the fuel fuel tank i'm going to set it it'll set right beside the uh, dry shaft kind of in the same it'll be the same location as what the hummer was it sits right on the inside of the frame rail hangs from the body there there'll probably be roughly about well, near as I'm coming up right now, about 15 gallons worth of capacity. So I figured that's too bad. I could go bigger. You wanted to try to still use the factory fuel neck here, right? Yeah. Near as I can tell right now, the, the way I'm looking, because it goes in, tucks right over the top of the the frame rail I have, and we'll put a little 90 on it and go right into my fuel tank. I'll have my pump sitting up on the, probably the frame, so I'll do a frame mount on the side with my filters, all that stuff. Don't have nothing in the tank, so I don't have to drop the tank if you ever have an issue or pull a body right not not that it's a big deal these things are actually pretty <laughs> yeah stiff. a few bolts you have them taken apart see the hub that's sitting here on the front this is actually a two-wheel drive hub this was the part of the four-wheel drive hub so you can get the suburbans in a two-wheel drive i just couldn't find one here in colorado there was a bunch of them down in texas yeah everything we have is four-wheel drive for yeah, the most part four-wheel drive i found one it just wasn't in the best of shape so you're kind of stuck with what you get, which wasn't a big deal. The torsion bars were still part of it. Some of them had a... Yeah, if you guys can see the... Some, some different mounts of, like, a spring. I tried to get a spring front end. Oh, yeah. And stuff, but it was just like I was up again. I was just running into... Like, that would have been the two-wheel drive. That would have been perfect. Get, it would have saved me some other time as far as that. But I don't, I don't know that I would have used that anyway because I couldn't lower the... Right. Angle. So I had chopped it off. That, that wasn't such a big concern. But back to the hub, so I was told by a friend of mine, because I was going to just leave the four-wheel drive hub, I'm like, ah, no big deal. Put a center cap on it and drive. As you guys can see, the four-wheel drive hub has the the piece right there where the axle slides into it and stuff. And then that one kind of has, like, the blank with the back on it. Yeah, it's just a, a bearing. You can see it's sealed. So it must have something that helps hold this. So a friend of mine said that he had had an issue with his, and he pulled an axle out of it. Well, he went right down the street around the block, and the... <laughs> wheel came off because he said the actual axle actually is part of the retaining to keep these things together so i well I better not risk it went to the junkyard found some so you're more or less making it like any other just strut front end just making a yeah. coil over mountain simplifies it all yep yeah there's some guys out there that are making these adapters they're they're everybody's got a little different i went with a little longer travel that's why i ended up being a little higher i might end up making the Hummer deal that ties off my frame comes up so it actually sort of looks like part of the lifting hooks like the original Hummer ones that was a big loop right here and that's how the helicopters would carry them so it comes up and then comes through the hood with a big lifting eye but that might be down the road that I change it there's still lots of stuff I'm just trying to get back to getting the rhythm get back to working on it like I said I've been doing lots of little things it just seems to eat up lots of time especially when you get into it and you want to make it just right little detail run into certain issues you can't be afraid you just adapt and overcome. <laughs> yeah and that's just kind of like he was saying earlier guys he just wants to figure out kind of what he wants to do with it engine wise now we're kind of thinking a twin turbo setup 
because then it's street friendly. You can drive it. It'll still make cool power and can do things that if you want it to, but kind of multi-purpose. Because this thing will be awesome for car cruises and meets mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that if you actually go cruise it around and stuff. So um, That's what I figure. What better flight is it? Like, how many <laughs> yeah. people see a lowered Hummer? That's right. Like, and this really isn't as low as I was wanting to get it. So down the road, I might even put air... Air ride right on it. Drop it. That way it can really. So if you're cruising the car shows and really want to drop it in the weeds. Yeah, that'd be cool. Drop it way down on the mount center for what it really is. I still got to come up with some seats. So we said in the last video, the, the guys that set these things for thousands of miles are some heroes because there ain't much. When you look at them, there's literally nothing to these seats. Which this thing won't have a top or anything like that. So it will be pretty, pretty raw and just loud and driving it and having some fun it's not like yeah. something you're going to want to take cross country necessarily but hey, you never know. although that would be kind of cool to to take off and see how far you drive it or to where to take it and go do some yeah. stuff so you can throw four people in it, some <laughs> you got lots of room it's pretty crazy how much room there is in one of these things yeah like they're huge kind of fun i will put a some kind of a shield to keep the sun off back but i'm, I'm, a, I'm almost like a little do. side by side yeah cage or something actually put some kind of a cage on it just more for a visual granted it work but i something's better than nothing hopefully you never put this thing on its lid but it's so wide it'd be <laughs> and low it shouldn't but it should. i guess anything could happen a lot of stuff happens we've already been in the ditch <laughs> so. he ended up doing the little six and a 6.86 the nice little glass one from holly so that'll be cool we'll tie that into the Probably going to do a Terminator X. This thing really doesn't need a Dominator or any sort of crazy extras. I mean, even if it's twin turbo, all we need is like a boost controller at most. Uh, not a ton of extra sensors. It's not like we're going to try to make just extreme power. We're just trying to make something that makes good power and is fun to drive more or less with this thing. So keep it simple. Save some cost on the... Save some costs on the... <laughs> that's, that's famous last word right there. Yeah. All right, everyone, that'll be it for the update on the Hummer. Hopefully bring you guys some more content on this as we make more progress. Until next time, we'll see you later.